So in this video, we are going to be making a custom footer from scratch for our website using Elementals container widget. So we are going to be using Elementor Pro in this one. But in a separate video, I am going to show you an alternative method to achieve the same results. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here in the back end of our WordPress website, in order to start building our footer, we have to go into templates and we have to go into the theme builder. So here in the theme builder on the left hand side, you can see that there's a whole bunch of different options that we can choose to custom build for our website. So today we're doing the footer. So what we do is we hover over the footer and you can click on the plus sign there and it'll take you directly to the builder. Or you can click on the footer and on the right hand side here on the top, you can see there's an actual button that says add new. So let's just do that now. So now that the Elemental Builder has loaded, here you can see that the library has popped up and it gives you a whole bunch of different options of footers that you can choose from. But in this video, we are going to be making us from scratch. So all we're going to do is going to click on close. And we're going to start building out our own custom footer. So the first thing I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to actually add the first container. I'm going to click on this plus sign. And then I'm going to choose a two column setup. So what this option does is it pre-builds a section with two containers in it. You can achieve the same thing if you select one of the first two options and then you can just manually put in the two containers yourself. But here I'm just going to select the option with the two containers already built in. Okay, so now that I have the container there, I'm going to make sure that I'm in the settings for it. I'm going to change all the settings of this main container on the left hand side menu. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the content width to full width because I want this obviously to stretch out to the whole screen. I'm quite happy with the direction because if you put it vertically then you can see how the containers stack up on top of each other so I don't actually want that I want them to be horizontal next to each other and then I'm going to make sure that the align items is in the center and what that does is this makes sure that the containers within the section is centrally aligned to each other okay so now that I'm happy with the settings the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the background color is the one that I want so I'm going to head over to style I'm going to say the background type is just a classic color and then I'm going to select it as white. So now I'm going to start adding widgets to this. And I'm going to click on the nine dot icon on the top. I'm going to look for a heading. I'm going to take that. I'm going to drag it to the first container. I'm going to let go. And now you can see that here on the left hand side is the settings for my heading widget. I'm going to change the text here of this title. Now that I have my text, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over into style. I'm going to make sure that this is centrally aligned for my design. So I'm going to change the typography of this. I'm going to just click on this pencil icon. And I'm going to change transform into uppercase. And then I'm going to make the weight a 400 just to make it a little bit thinner. The next thing I want to do is add a little bit of text underneath this. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on this nine dot icon. I'm going to scroll down till I see the text editor. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to let go of that underneath the title in this container. Here I'm going to add some text to complement the heading. Now that I'm happy with the text that I have over here, it's time to stylize a little bit. So in order to do that, I'm going to go click on to style and I'm going to make sure that the alignment is center so that it's a bit more balanced underneath the heading that I have for this section. Now that I'm happy with that, the next thing I want to have here is actually a button to go to the contact page. In order to add the button, we're going to click on the nine dot icon. I'm going to scroll down till I see a button. I'm going to click on that widget. I'm going to drag it into this container underneath the text widget. Okay, so now that the button's in place, you can see that the settings for the button is now on the left-hand side menu. I am going to change the text of this to contact us. The alignment of this button, I'm going to put into the center as well to match everything else that's in this container. So once we're happy with the text and alignment, don't forget to add the link that you want to link this button to. So if it's a contact page, you can type out contact page and it'll find it if it's already pre-made. If you have the URL ready, you can just copy paste the URL there. But do remember to put the link inside your button. So now we have all the settings, it's time to stylize this button. I don't want this as this gray, I'm going to actually change this whole button design. Okay, so here in the style, I'm going to change the typography a bit. I want it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to click on the pencil. I'm going to say that I want this as an 18. I want the weight to be maybe a 500 and I also want this as an uppercase. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to move over and colorize this. So the text color, I want this as a very dark gray black. The background color, I don't actually want one. So I'm just going to make it completely transparent. Then I'm going to put a border to this. I'm going to select on the border type. I'm going to select solid. I'm going to give it a width of three pixels. I'm happy with the radius there. If I wasn't, then I can actually type out a radius here like 10. And we go in on the design of this button. But we do want to actually have a hover effect. So that when you hover your mouse over it, it can change styles. So the person knows it's a button that they're going to be clicking. So here, underneath the text shadow, we're going to click on hover. And now here's all the settings of this button for hover. So here for hover, I'm going to just make the text white. And then for the background color, I'm going to make it the same color as this border. So that color, I'm going to put it down there. So now as you can see, as I hover, now those settings are coming into play. And then the background border, I'm going to keep it as the same color as well. 
and everything else I'm happy with that in the hover mode. Okay, so now that I have everything in this container, it's time to put something on the right hand side. And for this design, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an image on this side. So I'm gonna click on the nine dot icon, I'm gonna go down to image, I'm gonna click on that widget, I'm gonna drag it into this container over here. The very first thing I'm gonna do is obviously choose the image. So let's just click on choose image. Once you've selected your image, then you just say select. Now that we have the image there, let's just go and stylize it a little bit. I just wanted to have a bit more of a rounded edge. So under style, I'm gonna go down to the border radius and I'm gonna put that as a 10. And as you can see now, the borders has got a little bit of a rounded edge instead of just like a very square corner. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a, a complete new section underneath this one. Now you can add as many as you want inside a footer, you're not limited. Same thing applies to the header. You can have a whole bunch of vertically stacked containers as well. So over here, I'm gonna add a new container. And I'm gonna have this with a pre-built with two containers within. So now that I have that, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the settings of this main container. I'm gonna click on the six dot icon to make sure that I'm in the settings of the container. And then I'm going to click on full width as well, just to match the top. So now I'm going to add the social buttons and a copyright disclaimer. In order to do a copyright that auto adjusts the date, so you don't actually manually have to add it in, there is a cool trick for that. So let's go into the 9.icon. icon. We're going to select the text editor. We're going to drag that in there. And we can take out the text here within the settings of this text editor. Now, if you look carefully, here's a dynamic tags icon. If you click on that, you present with a whole bunch of different options that you can populate this text editor widget with. So what we're looking for is the current date time. We're going to select that. As you can see, it's presenting the exact date and time of when I'm actually recording this video. But I don't actually want the time itself. I'm just looking for the years. So now that we have this feature. Now let's just actually customize a little bit. So we're going to click on this wrench icon right next to date and time. It's a very little small thing. But if you click on that, a new drop down comes. And now we can change the date format. So here we, I'm going to choose custom. And all I want is years. So the custom format for that is just capital Y. Now if I press capital Y, you can see now this is 2024. I'm going to close that and now I'm going to add the copyright to it. Under advanced, if you open up that, you can type whatever text you want before and after that current date time that you've just put in. So what I want is something before, I'm going to say copyright with a copyright symbol. And after the copyright symbol, don't forget to add a space so that it can separate the copyright from 2024 just like that and you can see I put a space and there it is. If you don't know how to get the copyright symbol, go into Google and actually just type out copyright symbol and just copy the symbol that Google gives you and you can put it right in over here into this before text field. So now we're happy with that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into style. I'm gonna put this in center and I'm gonna leave everything else as is because I'm quite happy with that. And now I'm gonna add social icons here into this widget on the right hand side. So to do that, I'm gonna go into the nine dot icon and I'm just gonna type out social. So after I typed out social in the search results, here's the social icons. I'm going to click and drag that into the next container. And here's all the social icons. Now we can actually populate all the ones that we wanted. So say we wanted to add another one, which was Instagram. We just say add item. Then here I just type out Instagram for the icon. You select it, you say insert. Then you'd obviously give the URL to Instagram. Same applies for the YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. You just add the links to the icon. Say we wanted another one still, say like TikTok. We're gonna click on the add new item. Here under the icon, we click on that. And then we just type our TikTok. There's the icon for that, we say insert. And then again, the same with the other social icons. You just add the URL to the TikTok channel that you wanna share on your website. Okay, so now that we have all the links, let's start stylizing this to match the rest of the footer. So now under the shape, I want this to be a circle. I'm going to make this align to the right. And now that I'm happy with the alignment and that, I'm going to go into style and I'm going to stylize this to fit my footer. So I'm going to click on style. And here you can see under the icon, there's an official color. But I want custom color. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to say custom. So now we can choose the different colors to make up these icons. And the very primary color, which is going to be this outer color here, I don't want anything there. I just want the icons themselves to be colored. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to, under the primary color, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to make that completely transparent. And you can see the icons pretty much disappear. And the secondary color, I'm going to make it the same gray as everything else that's in this footer. Now that I'm happy with the colors, I can change the sizing to fit more the style that I want. So this 35 is fine for me. What I'd like to do is add an effect every time someone actually hovers over this, so they know that this is a button. So under icon hover, I'm going to choose a hover animation. I'm going to make this as a gross. Every time someone goes over, you can see that it just grows ever so slightly. Okay, so now we have a footer pretty much laid out how I'd like it. Okay, so now say for example that you are happy with all the widgets that you have on your footer, but you just want to move things around a little bit. Let's just say that I want this copyright and this social icons on the opposite sides. You can have the option of actually just moving the widgets or you can just move the whole container that it's within. So for here in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the entire container. So what I'm doing, I'm going to click and drag this container all the way to the front in front of the copyright container. I'm going to let go. 
if for some reason, and this does happen, that you can't actually drag things properly, the other option you can use is the navigator. So here at the bottom left, if I click on the navigator, the navigator options pop up. So if I click on something, you can see that it's highlighted in the navigator. So if I select the actual container, I can click and drag that container in the navigator and I'll swap around the widgets that you want to be swapped. So just as a fail safe, so for whatever reason that you can't click and drag, it's not going into the right position, you do have the option of the navigator to actually do that for you. So now that I've put everything into the right positions, I just want to move these social icons onto the left hand side. So to do that, I click on the social icons widget. And then under content, I'm gonna make sure that the alignment is now onto the left-hand side. Now I'm very happy with how this footer looks like. So once I'm happy with everything, it's time to publish this. So now we're gonna click on publish. Now you can see the condition window has popped up. So now we're gonna add a condition for this footer to be across the whole website. So we're gonna say add condition, and it automatically says include on entire site, it's the default. If for whatever reason you don't want this footer to be displayed somewhere, you do have the option to exclude this footer in other places that you don't want it to show. So for example, you don't want this to be in your blog posts and you want a different footer there. So that for this footer's display conditions, you'd add another one and say exclude singular and you can say posts. You have the option of all or you can actually select specific posts. The same thing can be done for pages. You can say on pages and you can say that this footer on say the contact page, you don't want it to be displayed there. You'd rather have a different one. So obviously then you'd build that other one and have its display conditions to be only on that page that this one is taken out of. So you do have the option to exclude for whatever reason. So right now in this example, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to make sure that this is for the entire site. So now that I'm happy with the display conditions, it's time to save and close. And there we go, our new custom footer is now gonna be working on our website. So let's see our footer in action. Okay, so here in my front page, I'm gonna scroll down all the way to the bottom. And now you can see that custom made footer that we had made is here now in my website. Okay, and that was how to make a custom footer for your website using the container widget of Elementor. I hope you liked this video. If you have any comments, and just send them down below and let me see what I can do. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that stuff makes a big difference to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.